Hello everyone. Now it's time to do a random card generator using JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. It doesn't require a lot of JavaScript. It doesn't require a lot of HTML and it doesn't require a lot of uh, CSS. So that's why it's a great exercise because you could uh, start doing something fast. It's for beginners, so you don't need to know much about uh, JavaScript. It could be like the ideal first exercise for you. Um, this is how it's gonna look. Every time we refresh, it's gonna show a different card with a different suit, basically. Okay, so here we are, about to start. Let's just have a quick review of the instructions. Uh, this project will learn, will teach you, or you will learn how to use uh, styles and change your website styles during runtime. Styles, it's CSS basically. Using vanilla.js, that means basically uh, having plain normal JavaScript. Um, the, you have to create an algorithm that ran randomly builds a card on every refresh. Every time the website refreshes, a new random card needs to show. The card must have one of the pos of these possible suits, like one of these four. And then the card, of course, has to have one from one to ten, either king, jack, ace, and no joker is need is needed. You don't have to generate a joker. In the end, the project needs to look like uh, this animated gif here. That every time you refresh, it shows a different card, and the colors matter, by the way. If you feel comfortable to doing it, you know, just try to do it right now. Don't follow the video. And if you're stuck, you can just come back to the video. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, you can uh, follow me until you're comfortable and try to do at least parts of it on your own. Uh, remember that the first uh, event on a website cycle is the onload. That's really important because that's where your application is going to start running. Your code is going to start running. And... Also, uh, this is a recommendation on, on, on what to, how to create your CSS. Basically, it's proposing that you should generate two classes in your CSS. One for a generic card and then one for the suit that you're going to replace with code after on every refresh. Because the card is always the same. What changes is the suit. Uh, and then it, another recommendation is that in plain CSS, you have already these symbols inside in something that it's called the HTML entities. And if you click on this link, it shows you all the entities that you can use from plain CSS. And in the end, you will find the poker suit. So let's start. Let's start. First thing we should do is to, since I'm using the Bridcode CLI to generate my boilerplate for vanilla.js, I'm going to just do Bridcode. Well, I have to get into the project. So CD random card webpack okay this is an empty folder there's nothing inside now i'm gonna say with good start vanilla js minus r the minus r is because i want to specify that my project i want my all the files that are going to be generated when i press enter i want them on the same folder which uh, where i'm standing so after pressing it you see that a bunch of files have been generated the structure of this is always the same. When you use the Briscoe CLI, it's going to always give you the same structure. The public folder is where everything is going to be thrown, like all the output, all the public code. Basically, it's what you have to upload into a server if you want to um, publish your website. The source is your original, original files that they are not going to be published or used on a production as, uh, environment or in a website. It's just source code. And it always starts in the index.js and the CSS starts on the index.css. This boilerplate already comes with jQuery, Bootstrap, and some little code here. Uh, you don't have to use Bootstrap if you don't want. Actually, I think we are not going to be using it, so I'm just going to delete it. We are not going to be using jQuery because it's not needed. jQuery, it's, it's not needed for 99.9999999% of the projects anymore. Uh, it makes sense at the beginning. Because it was hard to work with them, but now with JavaScript you can do basically every, like 99% of the stuff that you can that you had to use uh, jQuery before to do. So my recommendation is avoid jQuery 99% of the time. Um, so to start, we start always on window.onload. So I'm gonna do a console.log just to show that everything is working. 
everything is working. I'm going to save it. And here, I'm also importing Bootstrap, but I'm going to remove it. And I'm just going to have a background in gray, maybe. Body background gray, just to show that it's working the CSS. And then I'm going to, oh, we have to run npm install because the boilerplate comes with a bunch of libraries that we're going to have to uh, use, like, for example, nothing. <laughs> yeah, normally all the libraries that come with the boilerplate, you use them if you're going to be doing a, a development that it's uh, bigger than this. But still, uh, well, we're going to be using Webpack. That's one of the libraries that come with it because Webpack, Webpack is, uh, it's going to be generating, generating the bundle for us. Uh, if you want to learn more about Webpack, I suggest... Uh, that you watch videos about it, but I don't think it's needed for now. You can just, uh, because the only thing that you have to know right now is that when you code, everything is gonna be compiled into a final file that it's called a bundle. And that final file, it's gonna be uh, imported into the website, into the actual HTML of the website. That's all you need to know. And to do that, you have to say npm, after you npm install, you have to say npm run build. Every time you say npm run build, you're basically generating, you're grabbing all the stuff from inside index.js, you're grabbing all the stuff from index.scss, uh, and you're saying, can you please generate for me a bundle? And here's the explanation of the bundle that was generated for you. Here it is, bundle.js. It's saying, okay, I have finally generated the bundle. It it's uh, 47 kilobytes, and here it is in public. Remember that I said that only the public folder is published in, in your website. It's because the index, HTML, it's actually, if you see it here, it's importing the bundle. That's it. That's all it needs to import because everything you code, it's inside that bundle. I'm just going to put here a hello world, and that's it. And the bundle is here. Look, the bundle.js. If you open it, you will see stuff that you understand because it's just code. It's a compilation of your code. And if we search for a code here, let's say everything is working, let's search for that inside the bundle. So control F, search. Here it is. Everything is working. So this is our code and it's in the line 1400. Uh, and it's it's there because before it was doing a bunch of stuff that is required for, for Webpack because one of the things Webpack does is it generates code that is compatible with all the browsers. Maybe what you're coding is not going to be compatible in the Internet Explorer 9, but uh, thanks that you're using Webpack and in this particular case, Bubble, because we're using Bubble here. If you search for Bubble in Google, you will find more stuff about it. But thanks that we're using Bubble, it's going to be... Uh, throwing all the code, all your code is going to be transforming it into compatible code that is compatible on every browser, even if you're using very new techniques uh, that all browsers don't know. Okay, so after we have finishes, finished with this, we have our bundle. Let's right click on the index and run it and open the website. And here's our hello world, and as you can see, it has the gray background. So everything is working. The CSS is connected, and the HTML is connected. And let's open the console as well to see if here it is. Everything is working. So our message is also on the console. The next thing then will be to start doing the card, right? So for the card, the first thing we need to do is a div because it's the actual card. And maybe we'll have inside the card, we'll have a suit. Let's say span class suit and then we have at the bottom suit so let's say this is the top suit and this is the bottom suit and then we're gonna have the actual uh, number of the card so number okay let's just put some uh, initial values there to start working with the CSS. I'm going to put a spade here and a spade here and the number let's say that it's a 7 of spades. So let's refresh and that's how it looks for now. Let's remove the hello world. Here it is. Let's refresh. There it is, our card. 
now we have to make it uh, look like a card, right? So for that, like I said, we have to start by adding a class card to it, card. And then let's code our card here. Let's say that card, it's gonna be display inline block because we wanna make it a box. Then we're gonna say that the mark, we're gonna center it, so margin auto. And then we're gonna put some height to it. Let's say, it, uh, I don't know, 500 pixels of height. And then uh, width, maybe it can be 200 pixels. And let's see. We have to rebundle now. I cannot just go and check it out because it's in the CSS that I made changes. And the CSS, it has to be put into the bundle. So it's done. Then if I refresh, nothing happens. So maybe I have an error. Let me see. Well, it says that everything is okay. So something is wrong here. Let me just remove this. Ah, no, I need. I think we need to put it in in gray, in blue, in green. I'm sorry. So I'm gonna use the color picker for this. You can just uh, if you press, if you use, if you have a Mac, you can use the color picker utility. It's gonna give you the color here. Let me rebundle to see if the the new changes have been put into the bundle. Refresh. So the green is there, but this is not working. So let, let's open it in the inspector to see what's happening. So there's the card, it is working. The problem is that it's, it's transparent. So let's make it with the background white. Ah, I have to rebound it, yeah. So now let's do some refresh and there's the card, okay. So I guess some padding will be useful here. So let me put some padding into the card. So padding, uh, I don't know, 10 pixels maybe, yeah. Then let's apply a border, border radius. Here's the border radius of uh, let's say 20 pixels, cool. Then we have to make it a little bit bigger because it's, uh, let's just say 400 here and let's just say 300 here. Well, no, maybe 250. There, that looks more like a card. And the radius is too big, so let's let's make it smaller. Like that, maybe. Yeah, let's leave it at 10. I guess it depends on, on each card. But for us, it's okay like that. So that's enough for the general card. Maybe maybe we can apply some border to it. Ah, let's just apply some border to it. Some, um, I'll do it on the other side. Let me just copy all of this and put it in my CSS. And then I'm gonna say border one pixel solid black. Okay, now let's talk about the, the symbol, right? So for this one, since we wanna make sure that it's always on the top left and the other one's always on the top right, so it seems like a good candidate for a position um, rule. So top suit, let's say here top suit inside the card, we're gonna say that top suit is gonna have a position relative, no absolute, and then the pattern needs to be relative because if not, it's gonna be remember that an absolute position it's uh it's abs it's always connected to the nearest relative parent. So we want the nearest relative parent to be card because if not, it's gonna be attached to the entire body probably and then we want to say that you're gonna be top zero and left zero and let's do the same for the other suit for the bottom suit bottom but instead of saying top I'm gonna to say bottom bottom and instead of saying left I'm gonna say right because it's supposed to be on the right okay let's see if that work I'm gonna remodel There it is, let me refresh, and there you go, you see? There's this one and that one, but it's two, it's all the way to the right and to the left. So let, let's just separate it the same way we're separating the padding, so 20 pixels. So top 20, left 20, bottom 20, right 20, and rebundle.
let's wait okay there it is refresh and there it is our suits now we have to make them bigger right let's make them bigger here because I think it's faster so font size let's say 20 pixels bigger 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 maybe there yeah let's leave it at 80 so 80 pixels of font size for both 80 pixels and 80 pixels okay now let's center the the number that is there you see it there to center it we just have to say text align center to the card text align center and then let's see uh, maybe like a margin top here margin I know a padding a padding top because it's from the inside so padding top or maybe with a line height let me start let me try with a line height first like line a we have to make it the same size of the, the actual card let's start with that the line height is good to center stuff that is in line like text yeah the, the things that we actually we also center this uh, this thing because it's displaying line too so let's make it display uh, display block hmm display in line in line block yeah i don't i don't want to center that we managed to center this but we maybe we can do it with the before and the after yeah instead of having these two spans let's just have a before and after of the card let me remove these two and instead of because a bit, the before and the after actually work exactly like this they are just these two hidden elements that you can use and one it's always at the beginning of inside the the element and the other one's always at the end before the closing tag so if i say instead of top suit if I say and before and here I say and and after but I will have to put the content manually the content is the, what, what I use here I have to use now this content here I think let's see content this and this too Let's uh, let's see if it works with the before and the after. Uh, you guys think it, it worked? I don't know. I have to check now. Ah, yeah. Let me remo remove this too. So apparently, it's still there. Let me see. Yeah. Position absolute top left and the card with the line height yeah so the line height is not it's not a friend right now it's making the the icons center with the text so maybe we can instead of putting a instead of putting a line height maybe we can have like a 200 painting maybe let's see like a like a painting top of 200 let's see or 180 180 it's like half of it but a little bit less let's see yeah so it's because padding adds to the height we have to make the padding stop adding to the height and for that what we could do is that I think it's a border oh, no it's like box size CSS Box sizing, yeah. Box sizing border box will say that we want to avoid to have the padding adding to the height of the element. Let me just collapse this. I don't know what happened there. Okay, let's. When we say box, box sizing, we're saying that we want the padding to stop adding into the box content. So it's gonna. 
Still not working. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be working. Okay, maybe we can uh, subtract some height because it's gonna be the 200 of the height, but the the padding will also add here this 180. So it will be 180 plus 200. So it's like the same 400. And the, the size of the text, of course, that we have to change the size of it. Let's just put the same 8, eight pixels, 80 pixels. Let's rebundle because the 7 is too small. So let's refresh now. It's kind of like working. We have to tweak it a little bit, but you get the idea. Now we have to make sure we have to take care of the rest because I'm putting always the di here. You see that I'm putting always the diamond. No, not the diamond. The what was the name of that? The spade. Yeah. So I'm gonna remove this from here, and I'm gonna say that. I'm going to say that only the spade has it, okay? But the spade, the spade, let me say it like this, and spade, so and means, the and here means that it's in the same element. So if you have a dot card and the same exact element has a dot spade and that same, same element the before, the before, and the after of it, the before and the after will have spade icon here. Content. Yeah, both things. Let me see what's here. What's on? Oh, this is not an error. Cool. Then, if it, if it's not a spade then it is a club that is going to have this one so club club and here let me do the other four the same for heart oh heart is this one so this one's for heart And the same, it's for diamonds, this one, diamond, so diamond, diamond. So we have our four suits. Let's just try it right now. Let me open the console and bundle again to see the changes on the CSS. Let me just refresh here. And now we have to add the suits in the inspector here. We can add it with JavaScript later, but for now, if we say that it's going to be a spade, and without the S, I think. Let me see. Spade. Boom. There it is. You see? We added the spade. But we can also say that it's a heart. And there it is. And that's what, what we're going to be doing. We're going to be replacing the, the CSS class, the second CSS class. And of course, we need the color. So for color, the spade is black, so it doesn't need any extra color. The club, the heart, it's red, and the diamond is red. So if I refresh now, they will have the proper color. Um, by the way, we also need to make red the Ah, no, I think the number does, it's not red in real cards. The number stays the same color. It's only the, the symbol that goes red. So let's try again. Let's apply the heart. Heart. And there it is. You see? So that's cool. Let's just uh, finish the, the JS now. The JS is only, it's all about changing the, the styles on, on after load. Right, so we have the window on load. I recommend that you change this to an arrow. Arrows are are gonna give you a less trouble, a lot less trouble in the future if you keep using them, because functions have a weird uh, behavior when you use classes or React. So I suggest you use arrows. 
So what we need to do here is to assign, for example, document dot uh, query selector. We're going to say to that the card that we have, it's going to have now, you can say class list, I think, the class list, yeah, dot add, and we're going to add heart. We're adding the class heart on refresh. Let's try that. And we rebundle. And now instead of us having to change it here manually, if we refresh, it's going to be a hard already. But after the load, you're going to see the little blink. It's not a hard and then it's going to be hard. One, two, three. You see the little blink there? Like, well, it's there, believe me. Let's just uh, change it. Let's put a, a, a timeout. Set timeout. A timeout is basically a function in JavaScript that calls a function on every, for example, a thousand milliseconds. That is basically a thousand milliseconds is one second. So we're saying on every second, the I'm sorry, not on every second. The next on on the next second, like after one second ha uh, passes, please call this function, this arrow here, and change it to, let's say, speed. And also we have to remove, remove. The heart. So basically, it's gonna be a heart, and then it's gonna stop being a heart and become a spade after one second. Let's try that. One, two, three. So you're a heart and you're a spade. Woohoo! There it is. <laughs> okay. So now instead of doing all of this, all we have to do is select a random suit and a random number. So let's create a function here. Call it. Um, let random no generate random number and the number has to be um let number it's equal to math dot random times four because we want to generate the number between zero and four. No, it's not between 0 and 4. That's for the suit. It's between 0 and 0 and 12. Here it is. Between 0 and 12. So between 0 and 12. And then we apply a math dot floor to it. Yep. And then between 0 and 12. And then we have here an array with the numbers an array uh, it's gonna be a two three four five you get the idea i'm gonna pause this and i'm gonna do it manually so we don't waste much i don't waste a lot of your time okay here i have i i just generated the two arrays that's it that's all i did let me change this. Uh -huh. So we have from A to K, and then we have diamonds, spades, hearts, and clubs. That actually, I think I want to have them diamond, spades, heart, and club. Diamond. Okay, so we have. Now what we have to do is similar to the random exercise, random uh, excuse. If you did that exercise, if you haven't, don't worry. It's very similar to that one because we have, we have to generate a number between an index. Let's call it index for numbers, index numbers. That it's between zero and numbers at length, basically, because we have to pick a random a random number between the first item here and the last one. So it's between zero and the length minus one. That is basically like this. And the same for the suit. So index suit. And then we can let's let's actually split this function into one for the random number and one for the random suit. So the random number will be index numbers. No, it will be numbers in the position index numbers. And then the random suit will be, again, suit in the position 
index two. So we have your generate random suit here, suit and generate random number. Okay, this there's no problem here. Ah, yeah, we have to make these arrows too. I had a misspell. So it's equally equal to this arrow. Now we can say that the the on every refresh we're gonna add instead of heart we're gonna say that we're gonna add a random suit generate random suit and on and we also as, aside from adding the class list we're gonna also add the inner HTML of the number so generate random number I think that's it let's try it on let's try it Oh, I have missing semicolon, missing semicolon. Maybe that was the problem? Yeah, that was the problem. Let's try now. I'm gonna refresh. There we go, we have a seven again. Hmm, that's weird, having a seven again. Let's see. Another seven and another heart. Maybe, oh, well, the heart is, the, the suit is changing, but the seven is not. Ah, because I le left the dot add there, and that's a problem. It's the inner HTML is, is changed just with an equal, you know? Okay, let's uh, try again. <laughs> that was weird, that seven there. Okay, let's try again here, refresh. Now it's on. Um, now it's working, see? Now for just uh, centering the card, all we have to do is margin auto, but we did it. So I don't know why it didn't work. Let's see. Margin auto, here it is. And display inline block. So that's weird. What could be happening? Okay, I know what was happening with the margin auto. Um, I deleted this line, but it doesn't. That's not because of it. Uh, but I deleted the line because we don't need it. And the also the another thing we need to do is to remove the inline block, because margin auto only works with uh, in uh, the inline. It was instead of inline block, it's just block. And look, if I say display inline block, it doesn't work anymore. But if I remove it, it works. So to center it, it was just that. I guess you can do the rest of the tweaks yourself. Uh, hope you like it, and we'll see you next time.